For all his sons and his daughters Won't fill the cities with faces Iniquities of they father Bloodthirsty is of our nation Not for living water Waiting to put that work in Hamashiach give us that order Prepare slaughter For all his sons and his daughters Won't fill the cities with faces Iniquities of they father Bloodthirsty is of our nation Not for living water Waiting to put this work in Hamashiach give us that order That proceeds from you, your seed Coming from your bowels is your lineage, your descendancy, your bloodline, okay? And I will establish his kingdom. And I was going to establish his kingdom. So if you understand the biblical text and the, and the message of it, is that Christ was going to be the one sitting upon the throne in his own kingdom, ruling, you know, in righteousness. So in John 1, actually talking about Christ, right, and giving us the opportunity to be born again, it's not of a blood thing, like I said, when we crawl back into our mother's room, what is that, uh, John, it's either John 3 or John 9? John 3, uh, uh, I cannot crawl back into, John 3, I can't crawl back into my mother's womb. Three, start at like five. Start the top. Uh, this is the book of John, chapter 3, from the top. You know, there was a man of the Pharisees uh -huh. named Nicodemus. Named Nicodemus. A ruler of the Jews. Go ahead. The same came to Jesus by night Read. and said unto him, uh -huh. Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Read. For no man can do these miracles that thou dost, that thou doest, except God be with him. Read. Jesus said, Verily, and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. Except the man be born again, read. He cannot see the kingdom of God. He can't see the kingdom of God. So now we understand this concept is born, as you brought out in John 1. Right, go ahead. Verse 4, Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? I was an old man, then going to be born again in order to be able to see the kingdom of God, read. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb can and go, be born? Right can you go right again out. the second time and enter into your mother's womb for you to be born through that blood? No, go ahead. Verse five, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water. Except a man be born of water. And, and, of, and what? And of spirit. And of spirit. Go ahead. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That's the understanding of John uh, 1 and 13. Yeah. Being born again of water and of spirit. Not entering into your mother's womb again to be born through that blood. Yeah, I agree with that. Right. So, so what was the purpose of John 1? When you bring it out, you said, you said that was maybe a... No, uh, I, thought, I, said I thought I saw something differently, but I feel like I've seen it a few other times in there. I don't know where they're located. But, about what? Uh, about the bloodline? No, not the bloodline. It's just, uh, 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 I don't really know how to explain it, but, you know, with John 1 and 13, where it talks about uh, not being born of the will of the flesh, I feel like there was a lot of different scriptures that may have talked about that that I've seen in the past. I don't know where they are, though. And, and you brought that out in response to what? Spiritual. Uh, and yeah, spiritual and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 you know, like, because uh, he says something about it not having to do with spirituality. And, uh, and sometimes I think, you know, there are good people, you know, uh, and, and uh, I don't know, there's good people and bad people. There's, there's, there's some people that, like, uh, I guess, um, they're, they're pretty well off because they are doing what the Bible says. And there's people that are suffering because they're not. And uh, I think because uh, some of the people that are suffering, you know, uh, uh, for the people that are suffering, you know, I, I don't think it's put off on everybody. You know, I'm just trying to understand. Suffering, that. you said suffering is not put off on everybody. Oh yeah, I think so. Like uh, my my sins, you know, I don't think that you would suffer for sins that I commit. Uh, give me uh Jeremiah 24. We just brought this out last night. Uh, we just brought this out last night. I'm talking about good people, right? That have yeah. to suffer for the things that other oh, bad people do. Huh? Uh, I mean, you can hold it if it, if it, if it uh, clarifies a little more, but just hold it. hold it. And the reason I say that is because we hear this a lot, man, and how familiar are you with the Old Testament? I, uh, I, I can find my way around pretty good. Pretty good? The reason I ask that question is because a lot of times our people, when they get into studying the Word, they're usually introduced to the Word through a certain denomination of a religious practice, right, or denomination. Yeah. And most of the time, they're causing us to start our reading and our understanding at the back of the book rather than getting a clear-cut understanding as to who the Lord is dealing with, how he deals with people, yeah. right? This is what me and him is back here talking about before you brought up John 1, which is now where I step up and I, and I intervene. 
plenty of times the Lord is telling us how good people suffer for what other bad people do because he deals with nations. He's not just dealing with individual people. He has always been about nation. If he comes to and speaks into an individual, it's for a purpose of what? For them to go talk to a nation of people. Whether it was the prophets speaking to the nation of Israel, or if it was the prophets speaking to the nation of Egypt, the nation of Babylon, so on and so forth. He always commanded one individual to go speak unto a nation of people. Not to mention, let's talk about the prophets. Jeremiah in particular. Jeremiah fulfilled, give me, uh, hold that, give Jeremiah 12 and start from the top. Jeremiah told the Most High, he says, listen, you tried my ways, you know that I stand on your word and am obedient to you, yet Jeremiah still found himself into a pit of mud, about to die. It's about the will of God and what he wants to do. And when we understand that, we don't try to rationalize, well, there's good people and bad people, and I don't think that that kind of don't start thinking. Just go with what the Most High says. Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah 12, go ahead. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 12 verse, from the top. Read. Righteousness art thou, O Lord. Righteousness art thou, because no matter what ends up happening, and that's what even the nation of Israel, when they came to Jeremiah and asked, they said, tell us what the Lord said. And whatever it is he tells us to do, whether it be good or whether it be evil, we gonna do it. Because you have to understand it's about obedience. Go ahead. When I plead with thee, Yet let me walk with thee of thy judgment. Let me talk. Go ahead. Wherefore, do the, read that again. Let yet let me walk. Let me talk with thee of thy judgment. Let me talk with thee of thy judgments. Because remember, our thoughts is not God's thoughts. So the way that God judges things, suffering, that's a part of God's judgment. Letting people or allowing suffering to happen. We might not always understand where it came from or why God did it, but we have to accept His will. Correct. Go ahead. Wherefore do the way of the wicked prosper? Wherefore does the way of the wicked prosper? Because again, now we're talking about judgment and suffering and that happening to bad people. But Jeremiah is asking God, why is the wicked people, the ones that do bad things, are prospering? It don't seem like they're suffering. Especially look at the world we're living in now. How many corrupt people aren't suffering at all, or at least to most common knowledge, and they're out here prospering? But the people that you see do good things, they're the ones having the hardest time. Go ahead. Wherefore are all they happy that deal very treacherously? They are happy that are dealing treacherously. So just when we take this understanding, good people, you know, don't suffer or bad people don't have happiness or find goodness. We can't say that because that's contrary to what the Most High has told us and showed us through the inspiration and the writings of the prophets. We can't take that position. We have to just understand how the Lord deals and what he is dealing with them for. And he's dealt with the prophets. He's dealt with the Messiah. He's dealt with the apostles and the disciples, all for the purpose to wake up the nation of Israel so that they can be a light unto the rest of the world. Until the Israelites take back their rightful position in the good grace, mercy, and love of God above all nations of the earth, to be what? An example of how other people are supposed to live? The world is going to be in shambles. That's right. and, and, and things are going to be turned upside down. Wicked people are going to prosper and the righteous are the ones that's going to be sitting here suffering because more likely they're going to be outnumbered. It's more wicked people doing wickedness on the earth than there are people being just and obedient to God. Keep reading. Verse 2. Thou hast planted them. Yeah, they have taken root. Uh huh. They grow. Yeah, they bring forth fruit. Uh huh. Thou art near in their mouth uh -huh. and far from their reins. Go ahead. But thou, O Lord, knowest me. But talking about the wicked. But then he turns around and say, Lord, you know me. You have walked with me. I have walked in your ways and been obedient. Go ahead. But thou hast seen me. You have seen me. Go ahead. And tried my heart. And you have tried his heart. You know how it says, the Lord knows your heart. He searches the reins of, of man's heart. He's tried Jeremiah, and, and, and Jeremiah has proven himself to be obedient and to be righteous. Go ahead. And tried my heart towards thee. Read. Pulled them out like a sheep for the slaughter and prepared for them the day of slaughter. But then he's promising Jeremiah, or he's speaking to Jeremiah, letting them know, be patient and wait for the things that are going to come to these people. 
you're envying how they're prospering now because they have control. But I've already promised and told you, they're gonna come down off of this pedestal. They're gonna come down from this position of power because as they stay there, the world and the earth is gonna mourn. When the righteous people are put there, the world and the earth is gonna rejoice. And we just have to be patient and allow the Most High to work in his time and, and to know he doesn't work for us. Keep reading. Verse four, how long shall the land mourn? And the herbs of the Slakia, and the herds of every field wither uh -huh. for the wickedness of them that dwell therein, the beasts that are consumed, and the birds, because they said, He shall not see our last end. Because they don't understand what their last end is. When it says the herbs, the tender herbs are withered, the Lord likens his people, the nation of Israel, unto the tender herbs of grass or of the of the of the field, right? We're, the, we're his first fruit, right? We are, we are uh, uh, of his harvest. This is how he always likens just how much, how precious we are to him. We being the Israelites, that's who we believe that we are. So-called blacks, Hispanic, and native Indians. We can't envy or we can't be jealous of what the wicked is doing in their happiness and prosperity because they have not realized what their end is gonna be with them behaving like that. Jump to verse, uh, chapter 24 when I had you hold it, right? Yeah, from the top. Read, read. This is the book of Jeremiah, verse or chapter 24, from the top. The read. Lord showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs. Two baskets of figs, go ahead. That were set before the temple of the Lord. Go ahead. After that, Nebuchadnezzar, king king of Babylon, had carried away captive. Uh, go ahead. Jehoiakim, or Jehoiakim, 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 go ahead. The son of the king of Jehoiakim of Judah, uh -huh. and the princes of Judah with the carpenters and smiths. He's giving you a time frame. This is after King Jehoiakim, right? Go ahead. For from Jerusalem and had brought them to Babylon. Read. One basket had very good figs. So one basket out of the two fig baskets, one had good figs. Go ahead. Even like the figs that were first ripe. Even the first ripe figs. The Lord always is drawing a comparison to goodness and some type of agricultural harvest, right? Read. And the other basket had very naughty figs. And the other basket had bad figs or naughty figs. Go ahead. Which could not be eaten. They were so bad. Drawing, juxtaposing good versus bad, right? They're both figs, but then there's good ones and there's bad ones. Read. Then said, it's like you. Then said the Lord unto me, uh -huh. what seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, figs, the good figs, very good. And the evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. Uh -huh. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah. These good figs are carried away captive. Why isn't the evil ones carried away captive, but the good ones are carried away captive? Because when we understand how the story finished, is that the Lord was going to bring destruction on Jerusalem. So he had to get the good figs out of Jerusalem, bring them the destruction unto him, and then through the Persians and the Medes under King Darius, he brought the good figs back. But for 70 years, those good figs was in captivity in Babylon. We never know how the Lord is going to work. It's just up to us to be obedient. And guess what? When you read Jeremiah, all of the bad figs, the Lord kept giving them chance after chance after chance. Leave, ba I mean, leave Jerusalem, go to Babylon. They said, no, nah, we're not going to leave. So he sent um, Ishmael, the son of, I forget his name, not, not Ishmael, uh, uh, Isaac's brother, another, another Ishmaelite, right, from the Babylonians. He sent him and killed the governor that was still left in Jeru uh, Jerusalem, a Jewish governor killed them. The people got scared and said, well, we're going to go to Egypt. Jeremiah goes to Egypt with him and says, leave Egypt. And they said, nope, we're not leaving Egypt. We just want to do everything that was contrary to God. And what happened? The Lord destroyed, now is going to destroy Egypt. Because all of the places that the Israelites were, that the Israelites trusted in, the Lord brought judgment unto these people. And it was for the purpose of bringing them back in so that we can, again, be obedient to him. Because when we are obedient to him, everybody else is going to follow suit. Just You can find out in the laws of God that our law, such as the commandments, was going to be wisdom and understanding in the sight of other people. And they were going to look unto us, respect us, and account our ways as wise to follow. If we don't do that, it puts everybody else up over us and it brings us down. Now, how do we draw the connection? 
because look at people like me and you as so-called black men in America that are literally the influencers of the entire world. Everybody wants to follow after and everybody wants to take one of our ways that we've created and they want to follow it. Imagine if our ways was the laws of God. Who made the bald head cool? Michael Jordan. People was wearing bald heads then, but even then, remember back in the day, they had the George Jefferson, they wouldn't try to let it go. Michael Jordan made the bald head cool. Long shorts, fitted caps, and that's just pop culture type of a thing. We start getting into politics, we start getting into certain technological advances. Everybody pulls from us. We don't benefit from it because it has nothing to do with bringing people into the righteousness of God. And as long as me and you are on the bottom, trying to disregard who we are, and the obligation we have to follow God and represent God, the world will never be represented in the way in which God wants it to, because it's up to me and you. I tell these brothers all the time, we the superheroes of the world, why? Right. Because we have a responsibility to take on and magnify the ways of God to the world, the same way we magnify pop culture, athletic culture, uh, 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 like I said, technology and all, of the, all those different types of things. Our minds is in the wrong place. And as soon as we correct it, then we will start to benefit and have that happiness that we see and wicked people have, and even greater actions. For all his sons and his daughters, won't fill the cities with faces, iniquities of they father, bloodthirsty is of our nation, not for living God, waiting to put that work in, Hamashiach gives that out, prepare slaughter. For all his sons and his daughters, won't fill the cities with faces, iniquities of they father, bloodthirsty is of our nation, not for living God. Wait to put this work in, how much y'all give us that order?